Hi, I'm Wayne, and this is Regina, and we're Mileage Varies. Join us as we transition into full-time RV life and follow our motto of start small and start now. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about buying a tow vehicle. <laughs> so if you've watched our last video, you know that we were on a 10-year plan. So two years ago, well, really, three years ago, we got her Camry, and she has always loved Camrys, always had Camrys. And so it started making a noise, and this was our fault. We kind of let it go a little long. It was a, it was a bad noise. So, Waterfall yeah, she drove it to the dealership, and I was going to pick her up. So I show up at the dealership, and I see her car in the service bay with smoke and fluid pouring out of it. So my she, bad. Yep. She, <laughs> She got a Camry, and then two years later, one. I had a, a Chevy Colorado, an 05 Colorado that I had for 15 years almost. I think it was 12, 13, 13 years, 14, something like that. So I traded that in on a Kia Soul because we thought, you know what, 10 years, um, the Kias have the 10 year, 10,000 mile, or 100,000 mile warranty. This would be perfect. It's cheap, you know, gas, I'm cheap on gas, I'll drive it to work, and the time that this. You know, if the warranty's over with, we'll buy us a tow vehicle. It'll be good. So we changed our mind. <laughs> well, we saw we could change our yeah, mind. Yeah, we saw we could change our mind. We saw that our 10-year plan was turning into more like a two-year plan. Yeah, and this really doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm good. So basically what we are is we're, we're, we're ahead on the, we were ahead on the Camry, um, and we're underwater on my Kia. So and it, that doesn't bother me because the plan that we made was, was a good plan at the time. Um, but life happens. But it, yeah, it just changes. So I know I'm going to have to pay out some money on that. So uh, we never. We, it took us a long time to decide. We, we took the car, both cars, to the dealerships, and none of them wanted to even look at the Kia. Um, they found out what I owed on it, and they were, oh, you'd, you'd be better off not. I mean, and so got several offers, and it's what I thought. It's going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm about five grand underwater or somewhere in there. So part of that's due to the warranty that they yeah. us in to buy. <laughs> yeah, we kind of, we we fell for the monthly thing when we bought the Kia. I hadn't bought a car in a long time. And I had, when, I, when we lived in Michigan, I had dealt with one salesperson at one dealership and he always treated me, you know, and so I just, it never really, you know, I, I, I'm too trusting. I hear that a lot. And I, and I guess I'd rather be trusting them. But this time, you know, I got on the monthly thing and it, they added all the extras on and I didn't really realize it. So, but anyway, it is what it is. So, we decided to try the Camry, just, you know, trading the Camry. So, we went to the dealership. We took my car too, but that didn't, they didn't look at it. So, and it's worth, it's a 2017 SE, 16,000 miles has not been driven and the only the only thing wrong with the camry at all was the fact that I, my car got keyed somehow like on the on the back driver's side door there was a there was a scratch down to the metal kind of going diagonally across the car that was it yeah other than that and you know just a little bit of dirt and leaves that there wasn't in it. A, there wasn't a stain on the seat there wasn't mm -hmm. you know. the interior looked pristine like it was just you know like it just came off yeah. a lot once we cleaned it up and you know just vacuumed it out and no, everything down. worked, every button, every switch, everything. Um, so they low-balled us. Oh, they put us in this Tundra. <coughs> um, oh, do a drive it. We drove it. We really liked it. But um, it was used. Yep, 95,000 miles. It, yeah, it had 95,000 miles. It was a 2013. And I was very leery because, you know, I know that, you know, trucks have a higher value and typically they have higher miles. But we had a budget that we were trying to stick within. And, um, you know, we heard that tundras, tundras are very reliable, even, even at the higher miles. So that's why we, why we were thinking about it. Um, and it did, it drove wonderful. It was in excellent condition. And we, we actually were going to buy it. We were yeah. going to settle on that vehicle and buy it until we went back in and they huh. told us the trade, what they were going to give us for, for my, for my Camry. And it was. Now we had looked. We, was, we found oh, yeah. these out there with more miles on it than hers, 
selling for eighteen thousand. Yeah, nice. Eighteen to twenty. Yeah. Like eighteen was probably seventeen five was probably the lowest I found for, yeah. for a similar car like mine. And they were wanting to give us a lot less than that. Yeah. Let's say five over five thousand less than that. And and I know the trade in value and the retail value are different. Yeah, yeah. Even even when we, we looked up our car in on very good condition. The trade-in value, according to Kelly Blue Book, for my car was like it was either 16, 16, 16, 5, somewhere around in like between yeah. 15 and 16, 5 for my car, and they came back with a very low ball offer of 12, 5, and I was just like, no. Yeah, and they <laughs> didn't even. That was it. I mean, it was like, okay, that's all we that's all we're gonna offer you, and I was like, oh no. Um, and so the salesman did ask me. Um, well, what were you hoping? And I gave him the price that I was expecting to get. And he said, well, no, we can't do that. And I said, well, I can't just give you my car. Yeah. Um, but here's the important thing about that. We had talked before we went in there. Yes, we had. We had decided before we went into yeah. the dealership that, you know, like, this is what we're going to take. And yep. if they offer us less, we're going to walk. Yep. No matter how much we like the car we're driving, this is what we need to have to make the deal. And that is so important. Because I think if we hadn't have done that, we might have been like bickering back and forth, yeah. or you know, like not knowing what to do. Yep. But because we had that plan and we had discussed it ahead of time, we were. I mean, like Wayne is normally like the mediator, negotiator. I am, yeah. And the minute he said that, he just Wayne's like, okay, and he just up and walked out the door. <laughs> and I still, I still had to wait for the keys to my Camry. And so, well, no, wait, I take that back. Before that happened, so the dealer comes back, or the the salesman comes back and says, well, here's the Kelly Blue Book on your car, and he brings us a sheet out that has, you know, condition fair, market value thirteen thousand something, five hundred some around there. I don't remember the exact number, but he had listed as fair condition. Yeah. My car was in, like I said, if it hadn't been for that scratch, it would have been, it was at least very good, if not excellent condition. And the fact that he came out there and tried to lowball us with this and said, "We'll see right here on the Kelly Blue Book. It says it says this, and we're going to have to take that scratch out because your scratches that's deep and that's across three quarter panels, and we're going to have to do all this work to your car." And no, um, so and I told him I said, "Well, that's they, that's not an accurate quote because my car is not in fair condition." He said, "Oh yes, it is because we're going to have to do body work to it." I said, "You're going to have to." I said, "You could probably buff that out with, with you know with a, with a sander, maybe." Fill, it, fill that in with some dupla color and just put some polish back on it, it'll be good as new. Oh no, I sell these for a living. I know what we're gonna have to do. And, and you know, I don't sell cars, I don't work on cars, but I had other people tell me that's all it would need. You know, I just, we, neither one of us felt good about it. And so we decided that we just weren't gonna take the deal. Um, Cause one, the, the truck was higher miles than I really wanted. Um, even though it, you know, the Tundras, it, it was a one owner, it had, been, it had been taken very good care of. The, the service records were all there. It had been like maintained regularly. Um, so it was in, you know, good condition. But, you know, I just, could, I just could not. And they were not willing to come down on the price at all, which we felt it was a good price. It was a little over the blue, you know, the blue book suggested price um, so that's by about $2,000. And they would not come down on the price of the car at all. And then still wanted to give me five thousand less on my car, and we just we walked. We we just we yeah. had a nice day, and we left the dealership and didn't look back. So Sunday, we were just goofing off at home, and she said something. I don't know what got you started, but I saw an, I saw a TV commercial for Carvana. Carvana yeah, and I, we had been looking on there. It said we will buy your car, and so I thought, well. I'm just going to, you know, because it's sight unseen, they do ask you some questions, like to describe your car and any damage on it and the, the miles and the condition. And I did that and was perfectly honest about the scratch on the door. Um, and they came back with an offer, um, almost what we wanted in full, almost yeah. completely what we wanted in full for the car. Um, and so when they came back with, with that offer to buy our car, um, for that amount, we decided, I went and told Wayne, I said, okay, well, here's what they're going to give me on my car. And he said, he said, well, that's just what you wanted. I said, so go pick out a car. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, yes, we could have sold it for more. We could have sold it ourselves for more. I hate, I hate that. I hate dealing with that. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. 
He does not like to haggle. Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just. That's not me. I, I'm. I would have been a bear. I'm gonna not have any fun with the Kia because I know that's coming up. I gotta sell that outright. Not looking forward to that. And so. But, so he went online. Found. I mean, they had. I looked like the first truck I saw was this one. It's. Uh, 2016 F-150, it's XL, so it doesn't have all the fans. It's the sport package, so it, we didn't care about color. I really didn't. It's black. Um, it's blacked out. And we actually prefer that it doesn't have all those fancy oh, features yeah. and electronics that can go wrong. I mean, basically, it had the towing package that we wanted. Yeah, it doesn't have the full towing package, so it doesn't have the trailer brake, but that's so easy to add. I'm going to add that myself. Um, it has like the towing thing on the street where I can tell it what kind of trailer and stuff I have and it will it'll help with you know that adjust that'll help with the towing when I put the tow brake on and it'll help with that it has the, the sway control and the steering and the automatic thing it's got the hitch and the seven pin already I mean this has now it's the 2.7 twin turbo so it's 7400 pounds is the mm -hmm. towing around that yeah and we and we talked about that we thought we you know well we maybe we, but this is gonna kind of force us it's so easy <clears throat> it would be so easy if we got the 3.5 twin turbo or the five liter like a bigger engine we can we can yeah. get a bigger camper a more expensive camper yeah and so we felt like by sticking with with this particular size of truck with this towing capacity that would force us to stay within our budget and, and our, our motto. And our motto with the camper, which is start small, start now. Start small, start now. Um, I don't know where we heard that. We heard it somewhere. I heard it off some video from someone else on YouTube, and I'm sorry, I don't know who, but shout out to you. If I see it again, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll mention it. Because, because that has really stuck with me when they said that. You know, so whenever we look at like a bigger trailer or something, we just think, you know, oh, this would be so nice to have. And we're like, yeah, but it's going to cost more. And so that's kind of where we're at with the trailer, too. So. That will definitely be a couple of videos or more. <laughs> yeah, but um, but we have learned so much because she is a researcher. She is all about research. Yeah, and I've we looked have at hundreds of campers. We have oh spreadsheets goodness. galore. I so do. I have an Excel spreadsheet. When we get all this out, figured though. out, we'll be putting all these up for people. Maybe they'll help. Yeah, maybe they'll help somebody yeah. else. Because it, it, that to me is is like the most stressful part was one getting the tow vehicle figuring out what tow vehicle, you know. What, and then there's even what order? Do you get the yeah. trailer first or the tow vehicle yeah. first? We, we, we consciously thought of that and we decided to get the tow vehicle first. Yes, because we didn't want to be pigeonholed into, well, we have to buy this big expensive yeah. truck now because we have this big expensive camper. We wanted to find a truck that was within our budget and we got, we got I mean, I think it was a, it might have been a, a little bit more, um, but Carvana's kind of no haggle. Yeah. But they did give us top dollar for the trade-in for my Camry. And this and thing only has 25,000 miles on it. It only has 25,000 miles on And get this. Now, we're not towing, and these things aren't exactly right, but our average MPG on the highway here is 24 and a half in a truck, mm -hmm. full-size truck. Yeah, and it was like 18 and a half in the, you know, in the city. Yeah. And we know it'll, it'll go down probably with the towing, and that was another consideration. Uh, that we'll talk about later about the camper is, you know, the heavier yeah. the camper, probably the, the worse and it's going to be on fuel. You know, we'll be truck. going to places to see things, to hike and to see stuff, and so we'll be driving there. So, a more economical fuel mileage will save us money. But overall, um, and, and we're, we're going to do a separate video of, about the whole Carvana experience, so I don't want to get too much into that, mm -hmm. but we just kind of wanted to, to speak today about just you know how hard it was going in there we thought we had our heart set on a truck and we, we drove it we really liked it even though it was on higher miles and but you have to the, the thing we wanted to to kind of get across the most in this video is you is you know you have to make that decision before you go in to deal with a dealer of what your bottom line is and you have to be able and willing to get up and walk away if they don't meet it because there's there's more dealers out there there's more vehicles out there you have to be willing just to get up and walk away okay guys well i guess that's going to be it for today um if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and we hope you subscribe to our channel because like i said we're going to be doing many more videos um, as we prep 
and uh, get ready for our RVing adventure. So you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. See ya. Thank mm -hmm. you.